talking about. They're going to make me pay for the shirt. Do yeah. you think you can get the stain out? I don't do stains. You don't do stain. Here, put your jacket on. Nobody will notice. You know, we could have taken my car. But well, we, oh. yeah, we could have taken your car, but... Uh... <laughs> Oh, invitation. Uh, invitation. Could be a good time. Yeah, I think I left it in the car. It's okay. <laughs> you must be Chris Lorenzo. Danny's told me so much about you. And you must be Ellen Barkley. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Uh, Rita, uh, this is Ellen Barkley. She's Hi. Danny's manager. Oh, nice and one of the only women in the fight game. Yeah. Well, I mm. guess let's go find him. Let's go find so the guest of honor. Excited to see you. Okay. <laughs> I was looking for Ellen. Forget Ellen. You found the hidden treasure. Well, you know, it's funny. When Mr. Tarlow bought Danny's contract and signed me as his manager, the entire fight world questioned his sanity. And then, when we agreed to fight Dead Meat Dominguez, well, they questioned mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> they said it'd be a miracle if Danny survives the first round. <laughs> Hi, Mac. But who Thank the you. hell are they? Chris Lorenzo, champ. I'm honored. Uh, Rita, this is Mac Briggs, the ex-light heavyweight champion of the world. Hi. He's training Danny. Nice to meet you. Hey! <laughs> oh, man. What's up? Look at you. You look good. Oh, man. I finally feel comfortable in this mob. Yeah, boy. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Oh, and would you look at this? <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. Doesn't it bother you watching him power like that, Daddy? You bought me my first set of box cars. Did you ever tell you that? Uh, oh, you mean he had money back then? Time out. Let me, let me set this up, okay? <laughs> I am coaching junior hoops, and every time this kid shows up, somebody leaves with a busted nose, a black eye. <laughs> so it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that maybe basketball wouldn't score. <laughs> Away from her. Rupert, please. You think I don't see what's going on? Come on! No, Back no, on. Wait a minute. Come on. Ah, come on, Mr. Ah, Tarlow. No! Ah, no! Save it. Save it. Come on, save it. You dirty! I'm just going to win. Let me die. Good with the onions and the hot sauce, Raul. Perfection. Oh, I love the smell of napalm in the moment. Ha. So, you done with the sports session, Cap? 
Does it look like I'm done? What is that smell? That's it. I'm finished. I'm getting heartburn just looking at you. Well, sir, man, man does not live by cottage cheese alone. This man does. There's a nice feature in your friend Danny Newland there in the paper on page uh, three or four. Mm, they're doing it. They are not doing it. They're doing it, Chris. Trust me on this. <laughs> Women know these things. Women know these things. Mm. Pardon me. I seem to have left my decoder ring home this morning. What are you two geniuses talking about? Well, Chris's friend Danny and his lady manager, they're having a fling, see? And her fiance knows about it. It was a very nasty scene last night. I asked him, all right? There was absolutely nothing going on. Tarla right. was drunk. He imagined the whole thing. Ah, uh, he wasn't blind drunk. You know, I thought she was stupid putting the kid up against Dead Meat Dominguez. Now, if she's putting herself up against the kid, she's really stupid. Rupert Tarla is worth millions. Club fighters come very cheap. This is Al Albert at the Palm Beach estate of sports tycoon Rupert Tarlow. Rupert Tarlow recently took over the management of cruiserweight Danny Newland, who is a relative newcomer in the professional ranks. Newland's record may be short, but it's impressive. Eight fights, eight wins, seven by knockout. And next week, he goes into the ring in a scheduled 10-rounder against top-ranked Delino Dead Meat Dominguez. Although most of the experts consider this little more than a tune-up in Dominguez's march towards the WBF title. But the real story here today has nothing to do with that matchup next week. Seated to my right is Ellen Barkley. Ms. Barkley, you are not only hands down the most attractive promoter in boxing today, but you have managed to score quite a coup promoting a nationally televised fight your first time out of the box. Yes, we're really excited about this fight. Should be a She's great time. She's a piece of work, isn't she? I can't tell you how proud I am of this remarkable young woman, Al. Why, only last year she was my gopher. Go for coffee, go for donuts. And look at her now. You proud of yourself? You humiliated me out there. Join the club. Everyone on the payroll is talking about you and Newland. You're the one talking about it. Jesus, every time a man looks at me, any man, you think he's trying to get in my pants. Things have to change. Everything's going to hell with this whole deal. Miss Barkley? Come in, Mac. Can't this wait? Mac's got an idea. I think it's a pretty good one. Well, since uh, Dominguez has one of the strongest lefts in the division, I was thinking maybe we ought to get a heavyweight for these last few sessions. Now, I checked it out, and Marcus Delray is available. And he's a southpaw, too. How much will Delray cost? Maybe uh, four or five thousand. Forget it. I'm not throwing any more money down this hole. It's small change against what we stand to gain if Danny wins. If he wins? He's going to get beaten to a pulp. And I'm going to be sitting ringside enjoying every minute. You got what you wanted, right? You're famous. TV, newspapers. Well, I'm tired of picking up the tab. This little joke's gotten too damn expensive. Come on, Mike. Let's go. Look, there's nothing going on between me and Danny. Rupert, please. Just let me do my job. From now on, you are no longer authorized to make any decisions or to spend another dime without my personal approval. You can't do that. I've got a contract. The terms of which you've been violating for some time. Don't push me, Ellen. You forced me to push back. Now get out. Danny, up 
On your toes. Get up. That's it. It's like a girl. Oh, yeah? I am the champion! Okay, ah. Bruce. <laughs> God, what you doing here? Hey! Chris, buddy! Yeah, Chris, you're really putting your life in your hands, mixing it up with nuclear Newland. What are you doing? I work here, bud. Had the job for over a week. Massages have the best hands in the business. You got the lightest fingers in the business, Cotton. Danny, watch your wallet. That hurt, Chris. Rub down, Danny. Sounds good. Yo, Max. Hey, I gotta talk to you about the boss lady, man. She's killing me. Excuse me. All right, Cotton. Come on. Yeah, right. Me and you. I've been waiting for this. Come on, baby. Okay, ready? What's wrong, Max? Nothing. Just out of a job is all. Your boyfriend fired me. What? That's a joke, right? I'll kill you. Hey, hey. I'm serious. I need this guy. You said so yourself. If it wasn't for Mac, I'd... Fine. If that's the way he wants to play it, it's over. I'm out of here. Danny, wait! Hey, come on. Turn your back on this, Danny. Hey, look at me. It's too hard to get here. Okay? Briggs is already gone. Fired him an hour ago. I know he turned the kid around. But that doesn't mean Newland's got a chance in hell against Dominguez. You're very confident, Ruben. But if something goes wrong, and Dominguez doesn't get a shot at the title, my people are gonna be out $35 million. Hey! Damn you! <clears throat> Milk. It's good for you. I thought maybe you dozed off. But you did hear me, didn't you? Confident people have a tendency of being lazy. I know how you feel. Sweetheart, you gotta put that out of your mind. You gotta stay focused. It's killing me seeing you with him. No one he's touching you. <laughs> Sweetheart, it's just as hard for me. I mean, not much longer, okay? I promise. I'll tell him as soon as the fight's over. I want you to tell him now.
Do they got some high nasty doorknobs around here? Somebody popped him a couple of good shots. Yeah. No look at your marks around the neck. Doesn't look like there's any blood in the pool. Well, his shoes aren't scuffed, so he wasn't dragged out here. What do you think? He comes out here, he gets in a scuffle, he gets hit, goes into the pool, and he drowns. Yeah, maybe. But look at this. No sign of a fight. Patio furniture's all nice and neat. And we got this. Hmm. Martinis for one. Poolside, no second glass. Yeah. Can you bag this for us, please? Thanks. Yeah, well, maybe his guest took his glass home with him. Him, you got Danny Peck for this already, don't you? No, but look at his face. I mean, you think a woman would punch him and make him look like that? Him does not necessarily mean Danny. Yeah, but he's the first person that comes to mind, isn't he? All right, Larry, I got it, thanks. Mm. I wish I could say I was happy to see you. I know this is difficult for you. I got a couple questions I need to ask. You found him? Yeah, um, we had a fight last night. I left, I spent the night at a hotel, and when I got back this morning, I found him. What'd you fight about? <sighs> Danny, what else? Was Danny here? Um, no. I'm gonna need the name of the hotel you were at and anybody who might be able to verify your story, anybody who saw you there. Bag these sheets for me, will you, Greg? Yeah, I want every surface in here dusted, you guys. So you ever tear up a bed like that, just sleeping? Yeah, Ellen said she stayed at a hotel last night. Oh. She didn't talk about a blowout. Yeah, so who's been sleeping in her bed? That's a good question. Going, Dan. Okay. You hear what happened? Tarlo, yeah, I heard. Well, what's going on, man? Well, you think I killed him? No. If I gotta find out who did, that's what they paid me for. Yeah, yeah, right. When's the last time you saw Mac Briggs? Yesterday. Cleaned out his stuff and then he split. Right after he got canned by Tarlo. You seen him? Yeah, he seemed pretty fired up. He tell you where he was going last night? What is it with you, man? Now you think Mac's a killer? Mac wouldn't hurt anybody. Come on, Danny, make this easy, all right? Where were you last night? Come on, Danny, this is Chris. Remember, talk to me. Where were you last night? I was here, man. All right, I was here. I took a steam, I watched some tapes. I went back to the hotel about midnight. Anybody see you? Maybe. I don't know. Somebody worked Harlow over last night before he died. Somebody who knew what they were doing. Yeah, glad to hear it. You're pulling up with your right. Why? Come on, Danny. Come on, Danny. This is Dominguez. He just dropped his left. Hit him. Hit him, Danny. <laughs> What'd you do to your hand, man? Nothing, so that's all. I'm spying a lot. You know? Of all the people. I thought you believed in me, man. I do, Danny. I gotta see your hand. You wanna see my hand? Get a warrant, cop. Can I get you something, detective? Coffee? Juice? Yeah. Club soda? No. So I suppose you want to know where I was last night? Yes, I would. I was at a charity function in town. I'll write down the details for you. <laughs> a lot of people saw me, and I wrote a check with lots of zeros in it, so I'm sure they'll remember me. Do you mind if I change? I have a lunch appointment. No, that would be great. So, uh, were you and your father close? Well, it depends on what you mean by close. We had our differences. For a few years there, we weren't even speaking. 
People say I'm a lot like him. What do you think? You know a child? Soul heir, if that's what you're getting at. What about Ellen Barkley? What about her? Well, she's your father's fiance after their marriage. Am I missing something here? You don't know my father. He had more fiancés than he could keep track of. <sighs> he liked women. How many times had your father been married? Just once. He got all the benefits of marriage being engaged, and all it cost him was a ring. Then after a while, after he got tired of them, he'd go out and find himself a new fiancé. Usually women my age. Actresses, models, dancers. And most of the time, he'd pay them off and they'd leave quietly. But not Ellen. Sit me up, please. You think Ellen killed him? Do you? Look, money greases a lot of wheels. Ellen could have paid off that desk clerk to alibi her. Yeah, but what about the garage attendant? His records show that her car was there all night. Yeah, Thank but you. it could have happened, all right? Tarlo has got a lousy track record with his fiancés. Ellen stood to lose millions. You know, you are trying like hell to get the jacket to fit her partner. Danny slips right into it. He doesn't have an alibi. He's got motive, opportunity, a history of physical violence. If that's not enough, I saw him threaten the guy 12 hours before he died. Donovan can practically mail this thing in. You really don't think he did it, do you? Not a chance. The biggest shot of his life a week away, Danny's got a short fuse, but he's not stupid. All right, so how many names do we have left on our scorecard? Lori Tarlow? See, with her father marrying Ellen, she stood a good chance to be bumped to second position for the family fortune. No, her alibi checked out. Mac Briggs is still out there. Yeah, well, nobody can find him. I think getting fired is pretty thin for motive, don't you? Ellen is still our best shot. I wish that were true. We both know who our best shot is. Yeah. Hello. The doctor can see you now. We tried and we tried, but we just couldn't get out the stains. <laughs> what a job, huh? I would love that kind of easy out. Hey. We tried and we tried. We just couldn't solve the murder. <laughs> yeah, but I'm afraid this is one murder we can't solve, Lorenzo. It was a one-rounder in that bedroom, and your boy was right in the middle of it. His prints are all over the place. Damn. We got a semen sample. My money says it's an exact match to the stains on the sheets. So Tarlow comes in. He finds Danny in bed with his fiance. They go outside by the pool, and they have a fight. Kid punches his lights out. Tarlow falls into the pool and drowns. Slam dunk. Wait a minute, what about the picture by the pool? Yeah, so what about it? Come on, he catches Danny tagging his fiance, invites him out to the pool for martini. The fight would have been instant. They never would have made it out to the pool. Wow. That is fascinating, detective. But a case that neither makes nor breaks. There's no telling how long that booze was sitting there. Lab get any other prints? No, just the Barkley woman. Hey, come on, your kid's going down for the count. Now, you want me to send somebody else? I will. No. No, I got it. Hold on a second. Hey, Danny! Come on, ease up. You're hurting this guy. Yeah, I know. Well, look, that's what I told him, but he said he doesn't want to cancel. No, he doesn't even want to postpone. Hey, look, I gotta call you back, all right? Danny, that's enough! Mm -hmm. Danny, Danny! Come on, come on. Shh, shh, shh. Go grab a shower, man. got into it, all right? He caught you in bed with Ellen, didn't he? No. It was over him firing Mac, I told you. You told me you weren't there, Danny. All right. How about I give you a paper cup, some privacy? You give us a sample, we'll see if it matches. I want a lawyer. Now. Look, Danny, you're a professional. You know what happens when you pop someone out of the ring. 
Hey, that guy had it coming. The way he treated Mac, no respect. I couldn't let that slide. I need some coffee. How about you? Yeah, absolutely. OK. I'm going to buy the two and we're just friends. I owe you that, right? But what I want to know is, I mean, what I really want to know is who was she moaning and groaning with when Rupert walked into the bedroom? I mean, you should have seen that bed, man. It was wet. The sheets were everywhere. She must have been some wild piece of ass. Careful, Danny. Put your bad hand. Thing in my life, man. I know. Can't see you get hurt. Is Tarlo alive when you left? Wait a minute. You think she killed him, don't you? No. Then why are you covering for her, Danny? He was alive when you left, wasn't he? I got nothing more to say to you, man. Take him back down. So? He's gonna take the fall for it. If we can find another good suspect, he won't have to. Rupert Tarlow certainly has a share of enemies. I thought you were a rub down, man. Yeah, I've been needing one myself at this rate. Say, manager just got me working out with the guys, giving them a couple of tips. So how's Danny? Damn shame. Yeah, uh, no comment at this time. Hey, it uh, looks like you got him. I guess it's not gonna be a fight. I mean, if you got the guy and pin him for murder, I guess the uh, fight's off. Why all the interest, Scott? You know, last time I saw you, you were working for Donnie Dogs. Now you turn up here, you're up to something. Whatever do you mean, friend Chris? I haven't seen Donnie. He's handling the books on this fight, isn't he? And he sent you in here to spy. You know, you know what has been bugging the hell out of me? He's trying to figure out why Tarlo would fire Danny's trainer right before the fight, just like he wanted him to lose. There's a fix on this fight, isn't there? You got me, Mr. Fight, Chris. You got me, Mr. I'm not playing games here, Cotton. This fight was fixed, wasn't it? Carlo Promotions is a syndicate. Bunch of investors getting together, buying up franchises, racehorses, that kind of thing. This syndicate owns Danny Newlin. It also owns Dead Meat Dominguez. So they can't lose on this fight. They can lose big. Dominguez has got a shot at the title. We're talking big bucks here. The Newlin thing is, 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 is just a warm up. Don't you touch that ignition, Cotton. Yeah, it's just a warm up unless Danny beats Dominguez's butt. Right, then Dominguez is just another bum. The title shot is off, and the syndicate is out millions of dollars. This is interesting. So Donnie Dogs, he's a player in the syndicate? Small change. The dude calling all the shots' name is Fielding. Kurt Fielding. He's 60% of the operation. Thanks, God. Hey, does this fall under the you owe me one category? No. So, um, thanks. Looks like my lawyers are gonna have Danny out by this afternoon. <laughs> so you're gonna be charging him? Well, if he's charged, he stays. There's no bail on murder charges. <laughs> what, a fight? Guy drowns? Seems like to me it's more manslaughter, maybe even self-defense. Got this all figured out, don't you? Got the package you sold Danny? What the hell are you talking about? Danny admitted Tarlow found the two of you in bed together, that he hit him. 
Whose idea was it to drown him anyway? Look, he was alive, all right? When Danny left and when I left, he was sitting right out here by the pool, killing the pain in his gin. He told me to get out and not to come back. <sighs> Look, Danny and I were an accident. We just, we fell in love. Were you in love with Rupert Tarlow? <laughs> no. I knew him too well, you know. He wasn't a very nice man. But you knew what he could do for you, so you were willing to fake it. Look, I'm not proud of it, all right? I mean, I wasn't going to marry Rupert. I, I even would have told him as soon as the fight was over. Once you were established in the fight game? Yes, I used him. But he used me. You know, I was his assistant. Look, I'm the one who got him interested in fighting in the first place. I went out and scouted talent for months. And then I found Danny. You know, I was a military brat. My father was in the Marines. He was top-ranked middleweight at Pendleton. And I used to love to watch him fight. You know, he would have gone pro, but, well, he died before he got the chance in Vietnam. But Danny's a lot like him. He's tough. Stubborn, he's raw, and Danny needed me. Rupert Tarlow didn't need anyone. You said you left about 10.30. Coroner puts the time of death about midnight. Danny could have come back, you know. No, Rita. You don't know him like I do. I, I mean, in the heat of the anger, it might have happened. But he's not cold and calculating. And that's Rupert, not Danny. Hey, Lorenzo, hmm? tell me something. What's this called? Oh, well, that would be a bagel, sir. Wrong. I don't know what the hell it is, but it definitely is not a bagel. As a matter of fact, if it ever was a bagel, it died a long time ago. Which, come to think of it, explains the body bag. Why did I ever leave New York? Chris! Oh, there you are. Would you win the lottery? Uh, no, but I think Danny just did. Check it out. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> what? Yes. What? <gasps> what? Do you hear that? What? It's the people versus Danny Newland falling apart. Have a look at that. Hmm. All right. You want to let him walk? Fine. Just keep it tight, Mish. Thanks, Cap. Here's Newland. All right. Thanks, Kenny. You interrupted my workout. What do you want? The bruises on Tarlow's face were a couple of hours old at the time of death. So? So, Danny, the medical examiner is saying he could have been alive when you left. Meaning what? Well, meaning you're free to go. See you. Hey. I had to have confirmation. I also heard that Danny was free. Yeah, he is. So here I am. Now we got a fight to attend to. That's great. So, you're back on board? You're damn right. You know, the hotel said that they haven't seen him since last night. Ellen hasn't seen him. Well, I'll tell him you're looking for him if he happens by. All right, I'd appreciate it. Thanks, champ. You make this happen for him. I will. I know you will. <laughs> Thanks. Take it easy. Less arm. Yeah, more body.
Chris, you forget something? You made a big mistake coming back here. Bad judgment. Man has to pay for his mistakes. Okay, you gotta get some sleep, okay? You got a busy day tomorrow. I want you up doing road work at dawn, then we got the interview at nine. I wish you'd come on a show with me. Sweetie, I've got too many details to handle before I leave for Vegas. Besides, you'll do fine. You know, everybody thought that you were gonna pull out of this fight whenever all this went down. I'm full of surprises. <laughs> yes, you are. Mm. Well, we're on the wrong end of 30 to 1 here, which is exactly where we want to be. Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry. I'm honored to be Dead Meat's next meal. <laughs> mm. What's this about, Fielding? Want a drink? Ah, all business, huh, kid? I like that. Good, now let's talk some business. The fight game is not like any other sports where usually the best team wins. In the fight game, it's a, it's a matter of arranging things. Maintaining control. Rupert Tarlow didn't understand that. Do you? <laughs> you want me to lay down for Dominguez, is that it? You're quick. Ah, you see how quick he gets it? <laughs> it's so easy. But Rupert Tarlow let his personal feelings cloud his business judgment. He wanted to see you hurt. I mean, that meant more to him than the money. You want to know who really killed Rupert Tarlow? I'm going to give you a hint. It was a woman. You know, your girlfriend, Ellen Barkley. Oh, <laughs> listen, listen, he, he liked her very much and, uh, you know, he wanted to make her happy, so he gave her a present. You. But then he lost control. He couldn't guarantee me that you wouldn't be a problem. Big mistake. Don't make the same mistake, Danny. If you're still standing at the end of round two, she won't be. It's up to you, Danny. Her life or death, it's your call. Uh, no, Michael, actually, I I'm busy Friday night. Yeah. Actually, the rest of the weekend's pretty jammed up, too. Yeah. Uh Listen, I gotta go, okay? Y no, I gotta go. Okay, yeah, well, I, I promise. Bye. <clears throat> uh, that Michael O'Hara? Uh-huh. You know, I thought you guys were getting ready to pick up furniture, all of a sudden you give them the boot. Well, things weren't going too well. Underneath that charming boyish smile beats the heart of a horny lounge lizard. His scales were really starting to show. Ah, I knew it. See, the second you told me he loved to dance, I never trust a guy who loves to dance or a woman who doesn't. How charming. Another Lorenzoism gleaned from a cave painting. Look, can we just get back to the matter at hand here? We've got a murder open on our plate. Yeah. Needle pegs on Kurt Feeling. All right, now, Feeling owns dead meat to Mingus, right? Dominguez makes dead meat out of Danny. He gets a shot at the title, and with ancillary rights, Feeling's looking at making 20, 30 million bucks. So if Danny wins, or even if he does well, that means the whole title bout is off. But why does Fielding kill Tarlow? Because Tarlow couldn't guarantee the fight. Fielding wanted Tarlow to get Danny to take a dive. Yeah. Hmm. Danny wouldn't play. Not a chance in hell. 
So Fielding kills Charlo and he tries to pin it on Danny. I guess with a canceled fight, it cuts down on his losses. Now all we gotta do is build a case. Oh, this is the part of the job I really hate. Yeah, listen, I'm due for a pretrial with Donovan. I should be back in a couple of hours. Okay, I will get the ball rolling on this. See ya. Hey, Cap. Yeah. Oh, I just caught some air squawk about uh, Matt Briggs. Somebody found him in a gutter over in West Palm. They called it a muggy. I think it's serious. Who did this to you, Matt? Who did this? Okay, get him in. Get the door. This is Sean O'Grady reporting from Murph's gym in Palm Beach. My guest this morning will be Danny Newland, who's at the center of the controversy surrounding the recent death of Rupert Tarlow. But the real question that's on the boxing world's mind is this. Can Newland, already a huge underdog, maintain his concentration and his focus for the big fight coming up next week? Listen, Helen, are you okay? I'm fine. And you want to tell me who all these guys are outside? Insurance. Against what? Danny, what's going on? Look, Kurt Fielding and I had a little talk last night. He wants me to throw the fight. What? This is serious, Ellen. He killed Rupert. Or he had him killed, I don't know. You're not going to do it, are you? You don't understand. Yes, I do. What, Kurt Fielding said he was going to hurt me? That's why you got all these guys here, isn't it? Yeah. We've come this far. We're not backing down now, okay? Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. Look, I'll see you at the gym, okay? Danny! What's wrong? Fielding got Mac. But he left town. He came back last night. He wanted to surprise you. I talked to him. Fielding must have been waiting for him outside the gym. Is he gonna make it? I don't know. He's beat up pretty bad. Danny, you know he's sending you a message, don't you? Oh my god, Ellen! No answer. You know, her machine should have picked up. Line must be dead. This is Unit 34. We got a possible kidnapping in progress at 152 Ocean View Drive. Suspects are armed and dangerous. 10 4, Unit 34. Danny, what came between us, man? I'm sorry. It's this job. Sometimes, sometimes I can't go with my heart. You understand that? Don't worry about it. Stay in the car. No way, man. I'm going with you. Man, it's him. He's got it. won't let him travel. What? Uh, man, what am I going to do without Max? Nothing. He's got a TV set. We will be in constant contact with him. 
You're going? Yes, I am. What the hell? Someone's got a cable. No, hey. wait a minute. We gotta talk about <laughs> nope, this. Nope, there's no time. The flight leaves in 20 minutes. Let's go. You can't just take off like this. Why not? I got sick time. So, so what am I supposed to do? Well, come with us. I got connections. I'll get you a good seat. No, I am serious. What am I supposed to tell Captain Lipschitz? Tell Captain Lipschitz to watch the fight next Tuesday night. Ow. Oh.